Professor Tomas B. Lopez Jr., our President and Vice Chair of the Board of Regents, members of the Board of Regents, our special guest, Dr. Raimundo P. Arcega, our Executive Vice President, our Vice President for Administration and Finance, Aurora Serrano, our University Secretary and Concurrent uh, College of Business Administration, Dean Alexor Ramos, our uh, Dean of the College of Governance and Public Policy, Ederson Tapia, and also our Dean of our College of Allied Health Services, Dr. Ismael Perry Peralta, represented by Dr. Mary Faye Cariaga, the Associate Dean, and the other Deans, Executive Director uh, Anali Sancho of the Center for Human Kinesthetics, and uh, our executive director of the College of Broadcast and Digital Arts, Asa Larman, and the other executive directors, directors, department heads, uh, parents, graduates, friends, guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Our commencement speaker for this morning is the commissioner, one of the commissioners of the Commission on Higher Education. He is a professor of the University of the Philippines of the National College of Public Administration and Governance, a president of the Philippine Society for Public Administration, a senior fellow of the Pimentel Institute for Leadership and Governance, a fellow too of the Social Weather Station, an associate member of the National Research Council of the Philippines, and a founding member of the Network of Asia Pacific Schools of Public Administration and Governance, the Asian Association for Public Administration, and the Asian Group of Public Administration. He has a string of accomplishments. Backing up, his string of accomplishments are the following. He is a PhD and an MA degree holder in political science at the University of Hawaii, an MPA and an AB political science at the University of the Philippines. He took also special courses at the Institute for Policy Studies in Washington, D.C., and at the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University. Aside from those accomplishments, he's also an awardee of several pre prestigious awards, such as the International Publications Award of the University of the Philippines, a Centennial Professorial Chair Award for UP Diliman, a 2008 Centennial Achievement Award, UP Baguio Alumni Association, and other awards. Prior to his current position, he was also the former Dean of the UP and CIPAC, former Secretary General of the Eastern Regional Organization for Public Administration, for former Secretary General of the Association of Schools of Public Administration of the Philippines, former Executive Director of the Local Government Academy at DILG, former Director of so many prestigious organizations. On top of that, has also you know, published a lot of publications including Innovations and Excellence in Local Governance, Dictatorship and Martial Law, and the Philippine Presidency. He has also published papers on local government, development administration, and civil society in local and international journals, including Asian Survey, Administrative Science Quarterly, Casarinlan, the ASEAN Review of Public Administration, International Public Management Review, and the Philippine Journal of public administration. Well, he's married with three children. Please join me, ladies and gentlemen, in welcoming Commissioner Alex B. Brillantes. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Browner. Uh, I'm pleased to sit down. I'm very honored to be here today. And I guess what I'll try to do is to see if this works. Uh, I, I prepared a quick PowerPoint, so please bear with me. You know, as a professor, one always has to have a PowerPoint, but I did prepare uh, PowerPoint, but I promise I won't go beyond the time allotted. Okay, so to the members of the Board of Regents uh, of this great university, to President uh, Tom, Tom Lopez, whom I really, really respect over the years, whom I've known for some time, to our uh, Vice Presidents, of course to Vice President Browner, to all of our Vice Presidents, Executive Vice Presidents, Deans and Directors, and to my very good friend, uh, Dean Ederson Tapia, whom I've known through the years and I really respect his work. We've worked here also at the Pimental Institute for Local Governance. That's why I feel that uh, I'm really part of uh, the, the University of Makati, this great university. And uh, of course, to our students. Let's give the students a round of applause. Congratulations to all of you. 
and a loud applause to our faculty without fear. Uh, let's give a round of applause to our faculty. Thank you very much, dear faculty. And most of all, of course, of course, of course, let's give a round of applause to our dear, dear parents. To our parents, maraming, maraming kasama sa mga magulang po. Hindi ko dahil sa inyo, wala tayo dito ngayon. Talaga pong pinupukay namin po kayo ngayon. At sa inyong lahat po, mga kasama natin dito sa Great University of, University of Makati, ako po nagpapasalamat at uh, pinupugay ko kayong lahat po. Uh, let's see, uh, naghanda po ako ng nako, isang PowerPoint po at sana mabasa po ng gusto pero maliit lang po yan. Pero ang the theme that was given is really a legacy of institutionalizing new education paradigms. If there's anybody that somehow symbolizes new paradigms, if there's anybody that symbolizes innovation, if there's anybody that symbolizes the need to move from old ways of doing things to new things, doing things, I think it is the administration of the uh, President, University of Makati, headed, of course, by our President. So to you, Mr. President, I think we really honor you for really bringing this university to where it is today. So uh, this, uh, this is really an opportunity to do two, three things. Po. Uh, one is, for us, it's an opportunity for us to revisit, an opportunity to reflect, an opportunity to uh, reform, and an opportunity to, to look at the way things we are, okay? So revisit our vision. Before coming here po, over the past few days, I revisited your uh, uh, vision and mission. Tingnan po natin. Revisit, reflect, review, and reform. Number two po, I'll just go over your, your uh, vision statements. You're here. You've been here for four years. You've been here for three years. And I think it's very, very important for us to look at the vision. Nung, suma, nung nandito po kayo, tini, meron po tayong isang vision kung saan tayo patutungo. So, opportunities such as this is a time for us to not reflect re, re, reflect on the vision. Where are we today vis-a-vis -vis our vision? And of course, we'll, we'll review realities about productive citizens and IT-enabled professionals. We talk about the cutting edge. We talk about working with less privileged citizens. And we talk about uh, working with the children of the poor residents of Makati. So yun po mahalaga. We are talking about empowerment. We're talking about the cutting edge. We're talking about innovations. So that is the, the, the vision of the University of Makati. Then some of you, I'm also in public administration po, we look at the, uh, I, I wonder if I'm really breaking protocol by doing this, but I beg for your forgiveness because I can't say some more. But anyway, it's okay to do this. It's nice to sometimes not always follow the rules. Okay. <laughs> But CGPP, uh, headed by Dean Tapia, sa inyong vision po, we talk about alleviation poverty and globally competitive professionals, including, I like this, your political lawyer and, and, and uh, a participative political culture and citizenry. Look, what I'm doing now is we're simply revisiting your visions, okay? And question, as I go to your college, how are we, where are we vis-a-vis -vis that vision? Then the School of Continuing Professional Education, you're talking about quality innovation, to be a model of quality innovation, including the management of governance programs, business programs, and special programs. I, I tried to look at the uh, website of the um, um, med, med, um, School of Medical. The, it, did not, it, it did not include it, both, so essentially it's not here. But human kinesthetics, you talk about the leading educational institution and talk about responsive to the needs of students and stakeholders. Okay. Center for Broadcast and Digital Media. Trading ground of young artists. Promise, uh, and, and of course, uh, promote Filipino culture and identity. Filipino culture and identity, which was uh, put twice. Appreciation of our culture and identity. And uh, the need, a training ground for young artists. So, to sum, we talk about where are we vis a vis division. And if you look at the college where you are, are you? Or have we been productive citizens, IT enabled individuals, cutting edge, alleviation of poverty, globally competitive professionals, to be politically aware, or be politically aware, especially my own discipline of public administration, the Napia. <laughs> politically aware, participative political culture, model of quality innovation, model of quality innovation, cutting edge. When talking about cutting edge, it's really uh, questioning, it's really putting. Uh, challenging, not really always challenging authority, but really questioning authority, I think, is very, very important. Not accepting things the way they are. Pushing things. And leading education, to be a leading educational institution responsive to the needs of students and other stakeholders and to be a training ground. So, as we revisit, so first part of my quick presentation, let's revisit our vision. You are graduating. I think it's important to us, saan tayo po nang galing po? We talk about after four years of education in this great university, 
how have we contributed to the attainment of this vision? And equally important, dear friends, after leaving this, the halls of the academy, how will, we con how will we continue to contribute to this vision? So I encourage you every now and then, revisit how many of us, for instance, have visited the website of our school, of our college. No? And I'm sure not many have, but I'm sure more have. The question is, we came here, we quote unquote educated, we came here to be uh, 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 yeah, educated, and sometimes I think it's also we came here to deconstruct and question certain things of the way things. And I think that's what education is all about. We just don't accept things the way they are. We look at things and say, things could be better. And if there are things that are not good, then we question that. And I think that's the vision of the university, which I think the University of Makati and the different colleges stand for. Okay, after, after revisiting our vision, let's do a quick reflection. New perspectives, new paradigms, new ways of looking at things, new ways of doing things, as uh, shown by our president. The imperatives of paradigm shift. Of course, you might have seen this. It's the so-called uh, glass that is half empty or half full. Is it half empty or half full? I'm sure you've seen this. But how do we look at it? This is an example of a, an elephant. All of us are looking at the same elephant. But some of us, uh, they're all blindfolded. Some feel the ears, some feel the tusks, some feel the, some feel the legs, etc. We look at the same thing. But how do we interpret it? That's the beauty of being in a university where you have thousands of paradigms, thousands of perspectives. But what is important is we have multi-perspectives. What is kind of scary if you have only one perspective. So I think the beauty of being a graduate of this university is you have conflicting, you have conflicting, competing, and even uh, uh, paradigms and perspectives and interpretations. And I think the university is a place to do debate. And I think you have done that. That's why you are where we are. You are where you are today. Okay. So look at this the same way. Very quick, Lampo. If you look at this book, this is a picture in the 50s. There's a guy, he's a doctor. By the way, I have three, I have a, I have a doctor, daughter also. But whenever they call the house, my doc, doctor brilliantes, and say, you want, is it the real doctor or the fake doctor? <laughs> Kidding aside, of course. Because my doctor, my daughter's a medical doctor, and I'm just a PhD. But anyway, these doctors, I, 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 I'm not just, because we are also real doctors, I say. Anyway, this is a real doctor, and he talks about selling cigarettes. This was in the 50s. Siyang nagsabi po na okay magsigarilyo in the 50s. In the 50s, it was a doctor himself saying common cigarettes are the best. Well, of course, we all know now that Yossi Kadiri, etc., etc. The point is, because of technology, because of innovations, because of new knowledge, we have begun to question things the way they are. Look at things differently. And that is, I think, the theme of our graduation, where we look at uh, uh, where, we, where, where we look at new paradigms, new ways of doing things. Okay, vitamins. Look at this. I was just talking to President Lopez earlier about, you know, uh, mga um, cholesterol, etc. But do you know that Dante sabi sabi po, vita donuts are the best source of vitamins. But hey, you're kidding yourself. That's before. You know that, of course, vitamins are, the, so, I mean, uh, donuts are the source of trans fat. And of course, uh, all kinds of cholesterol. I guess the point I'm driving at is as we are reflecting, we look at things the way they are and say, hey, there are things that we have to reject, there are things that we have to accept, there are things that we have to deconstruct. Things change, knowledge change as you discover knowledge. Ito, maganda po ito, Coca-Cola. When is the best way to, uh, how soon is it to uh, feed, uh, let your child drink Coke? Alam mong sinabi dito? Not, uh, for a better start in life, start cola earlier. In other words, habang bata pa yung bata pa, inumin mo ng Coke. Tuto po ito, advertisement po ito, pinakita po ito ng aking kaibigan nung nasa Thailand po kami. At tawang-tawa ko kasi before was it, it is okay when the baby is drinking Coke, pa inumin mo ng Coke. Kanina I met the, I met the, the son of Ed and I was sure told you, Ed, dapat pa inumin na natin ito ng Coke. If we are thinking of that pandemic. But obviously you and I know that that's totally wrong because of the discovery. All I'm saying is as we reflect, we have to question things. We all know, of course, that Coke is there's so much sugar in it, and it's really kind of scary. Ito, I have three girls, uh, pasensya na kayo. But ito, dati, sinabihin po. Ang mga babae po, that's right, sweetheart. Dreams and goals are Satan's way of distracting you from making dinner. Can you beat that? Sabi noon, kayo mga babae, tigagawa lang dinner ng asawa niyo. I mean, what is this? And it's really great that we have so many women graduates here. Alam po ninyo, I, my wife gave birth three times. Uh, three children, all labas. 
And I'm telling you, if you've seen your wife give birth through Lamas, alam mo tayong mga lalaki, and I confess publicly that women are really much stronger. I cannot give birth the way my wife did, if you can. <laughs> Ang sakit-sakit po. Alam mo tayong mga lalaki, kapag nainig siya ng konting, hanap ka agad tayo na anesthesia. Pero if you see your wife give birth, women are really stronger than us. And that I say publicly. It's too bad that my wife, Lulu, isn't here. And that's too po. I say that. I say that po. Uh, so we and this I of course women are much they thought they're so empowered and of course uh, Gabriela Silang who is from Abra by the way I'm from Abra number one province of this country alphabetically <laughs> and more <laughs> but <laughs> Abra but si Gabriela Silang po at ito po kanina nakita ko lang to kanina as I was preparing on October 24 the women of Iceland went to a strike for equal rights 90% of women uh, walked out of their jobs and out of their homes shutting down the entire country, the men could barely cope. The, uh, so at the end of the year, Parliament passed a new law guaranteeing equal rights for equal pay. Five years earlier, Iceland elected the world's first woman president. Now Iceland has the highest gender uh, of, of, in the world. The point is, before women were not recognized, remember you said natin, that's right, sweetheart, sabi, that's right, sweetheart, ikaw ang gagawa ng pag, uh, hindi na nanganak mo. That is unacceptable today. And yes, we certainly, the whole point in reflecting is we are challenging and I think that is the uh, that is the discipline of being an academic just continue challenging just continue challenging the way things are the way things are being done uh, well this is my own uh, I have three girls I just put them there no, they all got <laughs> that's why women as chairman Mao said women hold half the sky the point is before things have changed reflection don't worry so we're reflecting things have changed including technology who of us? Who of us have not used Skype? Who of us have not used uh, uh, FaceTime? It was just before a figment of the imagination. Pero ngayon, you can talk to them real time. In fact, just before now, I, I was sending a picture to my wife. Please pray. I'm about to speak in 10 minutes. I sent it via Viber. Okay. And nag-selfie pa ni President. So, pinadala ko na, sir, yung picture natin sa aking misis. Just to, you know, that out the certificate of appearance. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it is now on Viber with my wife. Okay, but the point is, can you imagine this? 20 years ago, nung nag-aaral po ako sa Hawaii, hindi po, naghihintay ako. Punta ako sa mailbox, tingnan ko, dumating na mga sulat ng, 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 ng aking girlfriend. Punta, naghihintay ako ng tape recorder, papakinggan ko. Tapos iiyak-iyak ka pa. <laughs> Pero delayed. Pero right now, right now, you can talk to them real time. In fact, in fact, we are so impatient. That's what I've seen the, the young generation today. They cannot wait. Kung ang tagal ng download, nagkakalit na agad-agad. You know, during our time, we waited weeks. But now, kung matagal ng load, ibigta ka agad ng browser mo. That is how things are changing. But, okay, finally, we, we said review. Uh, no, uh, was the, the first one was, of course, revisit, uh, reflect, review. Okay, I'm still on time. Okay, reality check. Okay, uh, it's important for us to do some reality checks. This is within the context of globalization. There's this guy named Thomas Friedman who talked about the, the world globe being flat. I always use this in my classes, UP, among others, no? But the world is flat. Before it was so, you know, things that are more instantaneous today, things the we look at the world as a level playing field in terms of commerce, in terms of uh, having equal opportunity. In other words, it requires a perceptual shift, which is our theme in our graduation today. Pagbabago po ng pananaw, okay? That the perceptual shift required for all countries, companies, etc., where historical and geographical divisions are becoming increasingly irrelevant. We see uh, CNN, we see uh, BBC, everything happens instantaneously. Okay. Reality check, dear friends. Please don't feel bad. Just a few slides. Have you seen this slide? I, just, I took this picture in Bangkok. Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, and Indonesia all hail one leader. No one knows. Southeast Asia, do we do? What would you ask if you were a Filipino? Where is? Yeah? Anong kulang po dito? Well, bakit wala ang Pilipinas? Reality, lang, reality check lang po ito. Bakit wala ang Pilipinas? Ito. Kinuha kong retrato ito sa Tokyo. Ang laki-laki niyan. We don't accept Philippine peso. Ang point ko po rito, nako, we better work hard. Otherwise, if we don't work as hard as our neighbors, we're gonna be left behind. 
And that, I think, is what I'm talking about, the need to reflect and reform. Look at this, one Asia, one past. I was in Tokyo two weeks ago. I took this picture. When you, when you get this, when you get this uh, pass, it says that you can visit the cities. You can visit Bangkok, Delhi, Hanoi, Jakarta, Kuala Lumpur, Seoul, Taipei, and Tokyo. Excuse me, what cities can you visit? Bangkok, Delhi. One Asia, one pass. Question, bakit walang ni isang uh, city? I think, dear friends, what I'm saying is, this is also time for us when we also do some reality checks. Let's not sit on our laurels, magaling tayo, but reality check lang ng content. That's why if there's any message dito, we have to work hard and we have to work harder. I don't remember even my own uh, uh, commencement speaker, but if there's anything I want you to remember, it's really, let's continue working harder and harder. Okay, almost there. So within ASEAN community, ito, so we're now part of the global community, and we are now, now global, remember, we're not only competing in the Philippines, we'll compete in ASEAN. Question, will we be able to compete politically, economically, and socio-culturally? Dito sa education po. Okay. ASEAN integration, lahat po tayo, magkakasama-sama, will now be one region. The question, dear friends, the question, dear friends, that, that begs us to really look at things differently is when we are part of AEC, will we be able to compete with them pound for pound? And I think we will. Yung sinabi ko nina, may mga reality check. But I think, I think, it's important that we work hard. Look at this. Everybody is preparing for AEC. Singapore, to be the global schoolhouse. Indonesia, to build an army of in, uh, in, Indonesian intellectuals. Thailand, 40% participation rate. Malaysia, where we graduated. Regional hub of higher education. What will we be vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world? I think, dear friends, it is important for us to really learn that ASEAN is there, we will cooperate, but equally important, we will compete. We will cooperate, we will compete. My good friend, or our good friend, his name is Shel Habito, talks about the imperative for cooperation. Cooperate and compete. Otherwise, kung hindi po tayo magkipag-compete, baka po kapag-iwanan tayo. And we shall not let that happen. With the solar court around the corner, our graduates in the Philippines are more globally competitive. We have the ASEAN engineer. Will our medical practitioners be able to compete in sports, etc., etc.? So the key word here is co-competition. So if there's anything, uh, you can forget everything I say, forget me, etc. But two things, work hard and co-competition. Cooperate and compete. This is a word uh, point, I think, by my good friend, uh, Dr. Shelito Habito. Are we ready? Okay. So the next slides will talk about the Philippines ranking in education in Southeast Asia. And really the, the picture is not really the previous. Out of 148 countries, the Philippines ranked only two notches. We are the third less competitive among Southeast Asian nations. And this says that Kuntina Moito, number 66 lang po tayo. And this says that ito, uh, to only of the GDP po, uh, UNESCO standard, we should spend 6%. Ang ating tayo ay 2.8% pa lamang po. The point is, we have to do a lot of reforms, okay? So we are the seventh among Southeast Asian nations. We fared better than Cambodia, etc., etc. But that day, we will be the top five. But why are we not competing with the rest? No. So I think it's important, dear friends, that there is a little reality check here. Okay. But the Filipinos continue to be globally competitive, creative. Because I don't want us to be Filipino bashers. Definitely not. We can do it, as I would suggest. You know why? Our people, our greatest resource. You guys, all of us together. As you know, our contribution to the world, people power, all the police, outsourcing, English, patience, resiliency, Gawad Kalinga, of course, I'm really so proud of Gawad Kalinga, humor, resistance, faith, adaptability, and even uh, Filipinos in international organs. We are pound for pound. We can compete with the rest, but we have to work harder. And the next slides, they're not really as useful, but I'll just show you. It talks about our contribution. The Philippines did the anti cancer cream, 16 uh, bit microchip. I don't know if some of you know Dato Banatao, medical incubator, erythromycin, Pinoy Nagimbeto niyan, mold remover, eh, Philippine Nagimbeto niyan, quick ink, yung quick killing, the Filipino, uh, e jeepney, uh, pati po tong Filipino made train. 3-in-1 fire truck, nasa website ko lang yan, pati patis, pati uh, banana ketchup, ja and this just in. I was just writing, I, I, I saw this in the uh, internet this morning, that should an economic crisis 
akin to last decade's Great Recession happen again, the Philippines would be the most resilient country. We are not so bad, dear friends, but we have to realize that we have work to do. And this, I'm very happy with this. This is something where even our local our local governments are in the front lines. If you, but this picture is not really so helpful, but if you look there, you have Jesse Robredo, still in the background, uh, Mayor Hagedorn, etc. The point is, we also have a lot of outstanding local leaders that can be our contribution to the rest of the world, of which, of course, many of them did uh, study here. Finally, finally, okay, I'm on time. Reforms. So, kailan po ng pagpabago, okay? So, we were here to revisit, we are here to reflect, we are here to take a look at things the way we are, and finally, we have to do a number of reforms. Change mindsets and patterns. And this, I think, is important. I go back now to your visions. No? We change institutions, pagpabago po ng mga batas. Sa amin po sa CHED, meron ka man tinatawag na HERA, Higher Education Reform Agenda. And I think, as uh, our Professor President Lopez is saying, we also have to look uh, regulation, development plan. It's really something that we have to change on that, uh, and really work with in, in terms of having our higher education reform agenda, changing our paradigms. Leadership is very important. I know that the University of Makati has a very strong program on leadership and citizens' engagement. Don't put the website ng, ng uh, CGPP. They talk about participative political culture driven by our vision. That's why I encourage you to be, revisit our vision from the version. So, ang sinasabi ko po, kailangan po natin ng pagpabago. Pero baguhin po rin natin ang ating mga batas, ang ating mga regulasyon, mga form 137, whatever, whatever. Pero kailangan rin po baguhin yung ating pananaw. We have to change our perspectives. And finally, we have to have the leadership, and I pay tribute to the leadership of this great university. And of course, citizens' engagement. You cannot be reformed to government alone. You have to get involved towards a common vision. So, dear friends, reforms could be structural uh, uh, and uh, parents, we change our mindsets. Pagbabago po ang pag-isip. Yung pong mahalagang mahalaga. Pagbabago po ng pag-isip that we have to be, ang, ang, ang tema po natin yun, a new education paradigm towards a globally, co co globally comp competition, co-opetition. So, reforms are needed. The reforms are needed sense of urgency, but we have to work hard. It cannot be business as usual. Otherwise, we will go to that portion where I talked about the uh, uh, looking at our uh, uh, looking at the reality check. So, friends, what I did today was really to congratulate you and an opportunity to graduate. It's really an opportunity to really revisit, reflect, review, and reform. And we revisited our mission and vision statements. I think you should visit it. Look at your website. And how are you contributing to that vision? Or how, how has that vision and mission made you to what you are today? And equally important, how will you contribute to this vision? Because you shall be uh, later on taking your own as alma mater, as graduates of this university. Alma mater. Your, your soul. Then we have we reflect new perspectives, new patterns, new ways of looking at things. But it is important for us to be grounded. Review realities. Excuse me, we are not there yet. As a matter of fact, if we continue the way things we are, baka po mapag-iwanan tayo. But as I said, we have to work harder. And it is within our capacity. We have innovators. We have cutting-edge inventions. We have people who think beyond the box or out of the box who, or people who even bring the box with them. Okay. So, But at, at the end of the day, we have to bring about reforms. Reforms to define strategies and reforms to cope with changes. A new education pattern brought about by globalization. So globalization said we cannot escape globalization. It is great that we have a number of foreign students, a special tribute to our Korean graduates, that the world is indeed getting flatter and flatter. So do we look at the glass as half empty? Hey, let's continue reflecting. Let's continue being bothered. Equally important, let's continue challenging patterns. Let's continue deconstructing existing fears. But more important, as Tony Miloto said, wala tayong karapatan na sabi ibagsak kung wala tayong itatayo.